Hello everyone and uh, on behalf of Astrocast, welcome to our space webinar, Space Has No Limit. Today we're going to hear from the CEO of Astrocast, Fabienne Jordan. We're also going to talk with the CFO, Shell Carlson, and uh, have an interview with Jan Eivind Bang from Wilhelmsen. But our first speaker up is Odd Roger Enagsen, the CEO of Annea Space Center. My name is Odd Roger Enagsen and I am the CEO of uh, Annea Space. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce you to Andrea Space, what we have been doing and what we plan to do in the future. I have called this short presentation European Access to Space. And the reason uh, is obvious. Uh, space industry is the fastest growing industry. And uh, with a lot of companies like Astrocast coming up, there is a need for more capacity, more launch capacity, and Andrea Space is planning to build the first um, launch site for small satellites on European mainland. Andrea Space was established back in 1962, located at Andrea at 69 degrees north in Norway. Um, here you see our headquarters, but we have a lot of infrastructure uh, all over the island. Um, Five different business areas, science and technology, where we use sounding rockets for science uh, missions. We have launched more than 1,300 rockets in these uh, 60 years or 59 years to be exact. On the airspace unmanned, with a growing drone activity worldwide um, and over activity which has been ongoing for last 10, 15 years. On the space is well positioned to take um, to take a place also in this industry in the future. Space education is an important part of what we are doing with um, space courses from primary school to university level. More than six thousand students participating in different courses uh, here at uh, on the space every year. On the space defense doing test and training for Norwegian Armed Forces as well as Allied Forces with open waters, low air traffic, low ship traffic. On the is an ideal place to do um, mis advanced missile uh, testing. Uh, and so to the future and uh, on the space orbital, um, where we within some few weeks will start building a uh, new infrastructure for um, launching small satellites into orbit. First launch pad A, um, which you see here, uh, shall be ready for first launch in 2022. And within some few weeks, we will also start building launch pad B, also ready for first launch in 2022. Um, but the investments will be ongoing until 24, 25 where we will build mission control, launch control, uh, assembly integration, test buildings, clean rooms, accommodation, everything needed for a modern launch site. So with direct access to polar orbit and sun synchronous orbit, and good location, low air traffic, um, airport with long runway located some few kilometers from our headquarters and good harbor conditions on the island. We are well prepared for the future and to be an important part of the European space industry in the future. So I am looking forward to see you at on the as a visitor, as a guest or to launch your satellite. We will do our best to make you successful. Uh, thank you for your attention. Welcome back. We have just heard from Odd Roger Enoksen from Anaya Space Center, and it's quite obvious that space is growing bigger. Today, I have with me in studio also Jan Eivind Bang from Wilhelm Wilhelmsen. Welcome uh, and thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. Um, we used to say sky's the limit, but with Astrocast, that's not the case anymore. No, it uh, certainly isn't. And if you go back, uh, let's say, 10 years or so, the big theme about the digital transformation taking place was really three things happening at the same time. The ability to gather data, 
to store data and to have a much higher computing power. These three things really were the key ingredients to the digital transformation we have seen. However, gathering data has not been easy if you are at sea, if you are in more remote places of the world. And what Ostrakas is doing is really enabling gathering data uh, in a much, much larger scale. And that will allow us to move into new areas with new business models in a much, much more environmentally friendly way. So you could say that we take on new challenges and break new barriers. Oh, definitely. This will change the way I think many companies look upon their business model. It's not only about creating more businesses in more remote areas or doing what you're doing more efficiently. It's also about doing it in a more sustainable way. And the sustainability part will become more and more important over the years to come. And Ostracust, with their global network, will have a unique position to play. So what role do you see Ostracust take in this new space? I think it'll take a role with existing businesses which needs to monitor their con uh, existing business models more efficiently, but also create new values for companies going into new areas. If it's in more remote areas, uh, in the oceans, in remote parts of the world, either by creating new businesses or monitoring what they already have. And also I think Ostracast with their technology have a role to play to make sure that we monitor the planet's evolution in a much more sustainable way. So in this way, we could say that we're adding a new dim dimension. It's going to be three dimensions of the world. Uh, very much so. And I think it's, it's a requirement which will you see happening around now on the energy transition. And I think Ostracast will be an important ingredient for that type of uh, transition to take place. So looking back to Norway uh, and Ostracast being listed on Euronext Growth, uh, many people uh, are saying that Euronext Growth has become kind of a melting pot for te new technology, renewables, sort of a, a small Silicon Valley. Uh, what is your take on that? No, I think they're, they're right. If you look upon uh, all the companies coming there, today there's a lot of focus on the energy transition into green hydrogen or, or blue or grey for that matter. Uh, but I think Norway ha is a melting pot. And I think it's quite natural for this melting pot, not just to look upon the energy part of it, but also look upon new technologies like Ostracast, because these things go hand in hand in the years to come. And as a board member and soon to be investor of the company, when did you fir first learn about Ostracast? Uh, like many other companies or people, I read about it in the papers, etc. And, and uh, suddenly I, was, uh, I got a phone call and uh, was intrigued by the business model and the technology. And I'm just happy to be part of the team. If you were to summarize, uh, what's the most intriguing points of Astrocast? It's uh, using technology in a very, very different way than we've done up to now. And having a global footprint and being able to really influence the way businesses conduct their current business models, but also being part of the energy transition in a sustainable way. Thank you for joining us today, Jan Eivind uh, Wang from Wilhelmsen. Uh, next speaker up is uh, Astrocast CEO, uh, Fabien Jordan. Hello everyone. Space infrastructure is getting more and more critical to support the global operations of businesses around the world. At Astrocast, we operate a network of satellites, which is a game-changing infrastructure dedicated to the Internet of Things, or IoT. When we talk about IoT, we usually talk about terrestrial infrastructure like cellular or LP1 networks. These terrestrial networks cover only 10 to 50 percent of the globe and this has always been a major issue for all the businesses that operate globally or in remote areas and, and cannot communicate with their assets. Business is global but terrestrial connectivity will never be. So the only option you have to connect a device in a remote location is to use satellite communications. But so far, satellite communications have been way too expensive to really serve the global IoT market that is very cost sensitive. This is why we created the Astrocast network. Thousands of applications in remote areas can now benefit from a truly global and low cost IoT solution. We can help our customers answer questions like, where is my asset? What is the temperature, the pressure, the speed of my asset? What is the humidity level in the soil? What is the salinity of the water? How much gas or water is left in the tank? If they have a sensor, we have a way to transport their data 
from the sensor in the field to their computer. So how do you connect assets to our network? It is simple. You need a small modem such as this one that we provide as a product. It's not only very cost effective, but it is also ultra low power, which is ideal for battery powered applications. Now, how does this modem communicate with our satellites? Well, the Astrocast network relies on the most reliable and efficient spectrum available, which is called the L-band. It's the same spectrum used by the GPS system that you have in your phone. It allows us to design a very small and inexpensive antenna, like this one. And this is so essential for our customers as they integrate both the modem and the antenna into their products. It took us more than five years of groundbreaking technological developments and four successful rocket launches to build the foundation of the scalable satellite network. These satellites are fully designed and assembled in-house and we operate them from our mission control center here in Switzerland as well. The first 10 satellites of our network have now been successfully deployed in orbit. They have been tested extensively and they are performing very well. Many customers have tested our network, our products, our antennas, and they confirm that we are outperforming competition on power consumption, antenna size, and cost. Both our hardware products and our data services are really affordable. Now, the unique performance of our technologies attracted key players such as Airbus Defence and Space, Thuraya, Palantir, as well as the European Space Agency, who are all supporting us in the deployment of our global network. The unique features of our system will allow us to disrupt the fast-growing satellite IoT market with a leading integrated solution. Our market is huge and quite fragmented. There are many opportunities in the maritime and shipping industry, in the oil and gas sector, in the agriculture and livestock industry. We are also able to support many environmental applications like wildlife tracking, wildfire detection, monitoring of the climate and the oceans etc. Every month we discover new applications, new business cases that we can support. And what a great satisfaction it is for us to see major customers progressively starting to expand their IoT strategies and envisioning new business cases based on this new infrastructure that we have created. Going forward, the growth opportunities in the markets we are targeting are significant and we're very well positioned to capture these opportunities. We have set bold objectives, we have created a strong culture of support and innovation within our organization, and we are ready to expand our reach. As engraved on one of our satellites, space has no limit. With me in the studio, I have the CFO of Ostrogas, Shell Carlson. Thank you for joining us, Shell. Uh, you have a long history of working with space-related businesses. How would you say that has changed over the last decade? Well, there's two main changes for the last decade, and that's access to space and access to funding. Um, prior to the last decade, a lot of the access to space was through government-controlled launch vehicles. And today, what you're seeing now is access to space via commercially funded launch vehicles. And that, again, has then driven more access to funding. As people have gotten more interested in space, there's more funding available. And those factors are creating lots of opportunities for lots of companies. And talking about uh, lots of uh, excitement or, uh, or happenings around space, this summer we had both uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, Richard Branson traveling to space. Why do, you see, we see, why do you think we see this huge excitement around space activities? Well, it, again, it goes back to now it's being done by commercially operated companies. In the past, access to space again and, and launching humans into space was all done by government vehicles. And now you're seeing uh, billionaires like Mr. Bezos uh, and Mr. Branson doing it. And, and obviously it creates a lot of buzz and a lot of hype. Just look at the launch last week of Inspiration4 on, on SpaceX, the crew, the crew dragon into orbit with four non-astronauts uh, piloting a, a, a crew into, into orbit and, and circling the Earth for three days. It's fantastic. Creates a lot of buzz and, and brings a lot of interest into our inter industry. And just the achievement that you've seen from these private companies are, are unbelievable. And 
and we take our hat off to them and, and we're very exciting but excited about it because it, it uh, helps us as well so it is it, it kind of creates a uh, momentum for companies like Astropass? It sure does, because by seeing that um, space is more achievable and space is more attainable for a lot of companies, uh, investors become interested and investors are looking at good business cases where they can invest their money and invest their funds. And and to date, um, you know, this was largely operated and 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 done by government uh, entities. Now you see more and more private entities uh, providing access to space and and the funding is coming with it. So Astrocast has a clear uh, vision of what they want to achieve. And today you have 10 sa satellites circling. How many satellites do you need to uh, achieve your goal about uh, connecting the most re remote regions of the world? Well, the beauty of our system is that we are already connecting the most re remote regions by the 10 satellites we have in orbit today. We can connect uh, the remote areas with five satellites. Um, what, what we really are trying to do is to drive down the latency, meaning the time between the sensor on the ground sees the satellite. And that's where we're going to an optimal constellation of 100 satellites. Once we have 100 satellites in orbit, the latency between each time um, a sensor sees a satellite is less than 15 minutes. And that opens up a whole new slew of applications that we can benefit from. So we uh, encourage the audience to send in some questions in advance. And I've gotten some, I thought I would uh, bring them to you. Uh, first up is why is Astrocast a good investment case? Well, you look at the IoT business. The IoT business has been kind of um, stagnant for the uh, satellite uh, side of it for, for many years. But, but there is no other way to connect um, um, assets in remote areas than doing it by satellite. And it, the reason why it hasn't taken off before now is because there hasn't been a cost-effective solution of doing so. With Astrocast, there's a cost-effective solution and you're gonna see a lot of new companies using satellite that previously had never even considered using satellite for their IoT sensoring um, data services. You have, or you plan to have 100 satellites in the orbit by 2024. How do you plan to finance this? Well, the round we just did and the, the private placement we just did and, and, and the IPO was a good first step. And then we are planning to come back to the market sometime in 2022 to do a secondary offering. And then we would complement this with debt sources in, in Europe. And our overall needs will be funded by the end of 2022. And then we're going cash flow positive in 2024 and, and that will fund the entire constellation. The beauty of our system is that, the beauty of our constellation is that the capex to get 100 satellites in orbit is very, very limited in a satellite sense. Um, we can get 100 satellites in orbit for a capex of 50 million, which is almost unheard of. And, and so the needs to get fully funded is not that great. And, and that really helps us. And Astrocast is a Swiss company and people want to know, why did you decide to list on Euronext Growth? Well, we had a long discussions with our advisors on this. And, and what we see in Norway specifically is that some of the traditional businesses there, you know, you look at maritime, oil and gas, fish farming, they're all capital intensive before they start to make revenue and very, very similar to a satellite industry. So we felt that the investors would understand our business case, which, which, is the, which is key. We also felt that there are use cases in Norway that can benefit from our service. And, and uh, those two combinations made Euronext growth a very, very attractive opportunity. And one that we are very, very happy that we, uh, we seized. And do you consider <clears throat> uplisting to the main board? Well, we've only been listed less than a month, so it's a little early to think about that. I think we're gonna we're gonna wait and see and and take it uh, one step at a time. Um, who knows what's gonna happen in the future? But for the time being, we're extremely happy of being on your next growth. Thank you for joining us, Shell, uh, the CFO of Astrocast. Thank you, Eileen. That concludes our webinar. We hope you have learned more about space-related investments. Thank you for joining us and listening in on uh, this webinar and a special thanks to our speakers.
Don't forget that you can follow Astrocast on both Newsweb on their website and on social media. And thank you for joining us today.